Hello! Thank you for returning to my channel. In the last eight videos, I have taught you how to write the IUPAC nomenclature of organic compounds. I explained the rules to you and then we named the hydrocarbons, simple hydrocarbons. We then went ahead to branch chain hydrocarbons. Then we did some complex branches. Then we came to organic compounds which have functional groups. After the functional groups, we went ahead and we named organic compounds with two uh, functional groups. So now, in this video, we are going to do the nomenclature of substituted benzene compounds. Benzene is a cyclic structure. The molecular formula is C6H6. It's a ring with alternate double bonds. Benzene molecules or the benzene and its derivatives are known as the aromatic hydrocarbons. When we name aromatic hydrocarbons, let me tell you in the beginning itself that in addition to the IUPAC nomenclature, the trillium names are very, very popular and at times they are used in the IUPAC nomenclature too. Therefore, when we do benzene substituted compounds, it becomes important to know a few trivial expressions and names too. It helps. Let us start with what these are. Do you see this first substituted benzene compound? When you have a substitution on benzene, the substituent is written as a prefix. Now, for example, this is benzene and a methyl group is attached to it. Therefore, it is known as methyl benzene. The common name is toluene. O-M-E. M-E also stands for the methyl group and O-M-E would then be methoxy. So, this is methoxy benzene. The common name of methoxy benzene is anisole. Amine attached to benzene is aminobenzene and the common name is anilin. OH attached to benzene would be hydroxy benzene and the common name is phenol. The reason I have written these four are because these are very commonly used in the IUPAC nomenclature too. So these were mono substituted benzene compounds, a few of them. For di substituted benzene compounds, there is a let us look. There are only three possibilities for di substituted benzene compounds, that is, three possible locants, locant pairs. The one is 1, 2 di substitution which means the di substitution is between adjacent carbons. So what would the name of this compound be? It would be 1,2-dibromobenzene. Look at this one. It has a bromo on the first carbon and a bromo on the third carbon. Therefore, this substitution is known as 1,3-dibromobenzene. What would this compound be known as? The position is 1, 4. So it would be 1, 4 dibromobenzene. These are the only three possibilities. Why? Because let us assume that this bromo came here instead. After this, if we keep moving ahead, if the second bromo comes here, then we would not count in this direction. We would count in this direction according to the lowest locant rule. So it would again be 1, 3 dibromobenzene. In the common nomenclature, these positions have been given these expressions. This is known as ortho, 1, 2 dibromobenzene is known as ortho dibromobenzene. This is known, the 1, 3 position is known as the meta position. So this is 1, 3 dibromobenzene would be called meta dibromobenzene in common nomenclature, not in IUPAC nomenclature. And 1,4-dibromobenzene would be para-dibromobenzene. Now remember, the ortho, meta and para are expressions which are used for di-substituted benzenes. If the benzene is tri-substituted, then these do not make any sense. What do we do then? We assign the proper locants according to the rules of IUPAC nomenclature, which we've already done in the previous videos. Let us take this first compound, which is tri-substituted now. What does it have? It has chloro and it has two nitros in it. Okay? When we write the names of the uh, tri-substituted or compound, the IUPAC nomenclature, the substituents are written in alphabetical order and the sum, lowest sum of locants rule is followed. 
So, how would we name this? Look at this. 1, 2, 3, 4. So, this should be 1, 2, 4. If I tried to count in this direction, it would have been different. And if I counted from here, if I treated this as the first carbon, this would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 5. But no, 1, 2, 4 is a lower sum of locant. Therefore, this numbering is correct. Okay? Now, it has dinitro and it has a chloro. N and C. C comes first. So, I will write this as 1, chloro. 2, comma, 4, dinitro, benzene. Am I clear? This would be 1, chloro, 2, 4, dinitro, benzene. Now, look at this compound here. It has got a nitro group to it, chlorine, that is chloro, and a methyl group. So, how would we name this? This would be... Again, let us first number it. According to the lowest sum of locants rule, this should be 1, this should be 2, and this should be 4. See, if I tried to count from this direction, it would, be, would have been 1, 3, 5. So the lowest sum of locants tells us that the methyl group comes first, chloro second, and nitro third. So chloro should come first, LMN. Methyl should come second, and then nitro. So we write this as 2 chloro 1 methyl and 4 nitro sorry small n it will not be large n nitro benzene I hope I'm clear this would be 2 chloro 1 methyl 4 nitro benzene. Now look, whenever you have these compounds, these are treated as the basic compound and then the substitution is written, at, since this is taken as the basic compound, the substitution has to be done to the basic compound. If we take anisole, like we are taking the name anisole is used, or toluene is used, or aniline or phenol are used. In the, whenever we are using these names, it becomes important to make this carbon the first carbon. Whichever carbon has this particular group in it would be the first carbon, and then try to assign the lowest locates to whatever remains. So let us do two of these. Yes, three of these. This is OME. It means it's an anisole. So if this OME is 1, this should be 2 and this should be 4. So it would be 2 chloro, 2 chloro, 4 methyl and this automatically would be assumed to be the first carbon. So it would be anisole. This would be 2 chloro, 4 methyl, anisole. Am I clear? Look at this compound now. This is amine. So it is an aniline. Let us assume this. Let us use this in the IUPAC nomenclature. If we do that, this should be the first carbon. This would be the second carbon. And this is the fourth carbon. Now this is ethyl. This is methyl. So ethyl comes first. So we write 4 ethyl. 2 methyl. And this would be aniline. Right? So now, let's come to this last compound. It's a phenol. A phenol, this is 1, this is 3, this is 4. Both are methyls. So this would be 3, 4, di, comma. 3, 4, dimethyl phenol. Right? So this was the nomenclature, IUPAC nomenclature of benzene substituted compounds. Try and practice as much as you can. Solve as many problems as you can. It will, believe me, it will become easier and easier every time you go back to it. I wish you all the best in the IUPAC nomenclature for whatever exam you wish to appear for or you are appearing for. 
do well. God bless. Thank you.